Straight ahead on CCX News, two big changes coming to Wyzetta Athletic Fields. These require city council approval. Plus, we'll take you to a big soccer tournament to meet a team that's ready to step in and help on and off the field. But first, a Brooklyn Park City Council vote that involves the pending departure of the city's fire chief. CCX News starts right now. And hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Brooklyn Park's fire chief plans to step down. Chief Ken Prilliman has reached a separation agreement with the city manager. The move comes amid accusations that the chief was mistreated by a council member. Delane Cleveland joins us now with more. Delane? Thank you, Alex. In a letter sent to city staff, city manager Jay Strobel says it's a move that's being done for the benefit of the fire department, its staff, and the overall culture. The city council will review terms of a separation agreement Monday night, which would pay Prilliman more than $100,000 up there uh, to greet. For the past nine years, Ken Prilliman has served as Brooklyn Park's fire chief. I'll be right out. Council member Rich Gates says in that time, he's made his mark. He's a leader in the community. He's a huge supporter of our Liberian community, um, has done you know many personal things for the Liberian community, even going over to Liberia. Gates is a supporter of Prilliman. Same goes for Mayor Jeff Lundy. We have a chief who's done a great job. I love Chief uh, Perlman. Uh, he's helped evolve the fire department. But not everyone in the city feels the same way. In part because three years ago, Prilliman changed the staffing model by opting to replace part-time firefighters with 18 full-time firefighters. The move was designed to help address ongoing challenges of recruiting and retaining part-time firefighters. Well, one of our council members is currently a Brooklyn Park paid on-call firefighter. And he has used that, um, as he did his previous term, uh, who, when he also got Chief Schmidt to resign, uh, to micromanage the fire department. Gates is referring to council member problem, Mark Maida. We got fires all over the place. The mayor accuses Maida of using his position to mistreat Prilliman. You know, it's one thing I think to ask questions. I think it's, it's good to ask tough questions, but not everything has to be a question that's a insulting or a leading question where it's really about an attack. In June, Gates says that Prilliman wrote a letter to the mayor and city manager where he described a hostile work environment. So he threatened the lawsuit. You know, that lawsuit could cost us over $2 million if he was to win. To head off a potential lawsuit, city manager Jay Strobel worked out terms of a separation agreement with the chief, which includes six months in wages and benefits starting September 3rd, a payment of $35,000 for his complete release of any claims against the city, and a payment for his accrued sick leave. The grand total of the separation agreement would be more than $100,000. So $100,000 or $2 million as a steward of taxpayer money, which one makes more sense? The council will vote on the terms of that agreement with Prilliman Monday night. And I say Godspeed because he's done a great job. He doesn't need to be treated like this. I think you we reached out to Mark Maida, but as we went to air, he hadn't yet returned our calls. He did, however, say to the Star Tribune that my job as a city council member is to set the budget and be responsible and accountable for the citizens' taxes. I can only do that if I am given factual and truthful information. We also reached out to Chief Prilliman, but he said he's not doing any interviews before the council takes up the issue on Monday. Mike. All right, Delaney, thanks. A state Supreme Court this week has ruled in favor of rental licensing and inspection rules in a case that involved Golden Valley. The court heard the case back in January. Two Golden Valley landlords had refused an inspection of their duplex. Their attorney said they have the right to decide whether to let the city in. The landlords argued the city must show probable cause of a housing violation and get a warrant to enter a property. But this week, the Supreme Court disagreed, saying requiring a warrant for routine inspections could endanger public health and safety. An appeal is not expected. It could soon be easier for fans to keep track of the score at Wise Out of Baseball and softball games next season. The school plans to put up scoreboards that are larger than city rules call for. The new scoreboards will display inning by inning scores, replacing a baseball scoreboard that was outdated. 
the EPA has banned the light bulbs that are used in it, so they're kind of dated. So we were harvesting light bulbs from old scoreboards and putting them in there so they weren't bright. They were used dim bulbs. So it kind of worked all together where this stadium was being refurbished for baseball, and we thought, you know what, let's take down the scoreboard at this time and replace it. Funding will come from school boosters. The Plymouth City Council is expected to give the final okay in August. Minnesota has reached a milestone when it comes to jobs. And for the first time in state history, Minnesota's job count in June passed the 3 million mark. According to the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, the state has gained more than 77,000 jobs over the past year. That's the biggest job gain since the spring of 1998. Local cities have also experienced growth. In Plymouth, the addition of the Smith's Medical Headquarters last year spurred job growth in the city. When Smith's Medical relocated to Plymouth last year, there were a reported 530 employees at its headquarters. A little more than a year later, there are now around 650 employees. Plymouth has a total of more than 55,000 jobs in the city. Big road closure plan for this weekend has been delayed due to all the recent rainfall. Southbound Highway 169 was supposed to be closed between Highway 55 in Golden Valley and Highway 7 in Hopkins. That closure will now be rescheduled for next weekend. The stretch of highway will be closed for paving work. And last year, three Plymouth kids organized a run after their neighborhood friend died from brain cancer. This year, the kids hope to raise even more money for pediatric cancer treatments. And last year, we raised like $10,000, so we're hoping to raise like $12,000 or like $15,000 this year. The second annual Kids Fun Run will be held in Crystal this year. It's held in honor of five-year-old Sam Lee, who died in March of 2016. His parents started the nonprofit with purpose to call attention to the lack of funding and research devoted to childhood cancers. Three Plymouth kids in the Lost Lake neighborhood hope they can help the cause by organizing a lemonade stand and the Kids Fun Run in memory of Sam. It was really fun to play with, so we wanted to raise more money so no one, no other kids had to go through what he had to go through. They were his neighborhood friends. Like, I didn't know he would have neighborhood friends, right? So to watch him play with these kids in this space is like, um, I, it's immeasurable to me. Um, and the fact that right after Sam died, they spent their summer planning an event in his honor, um, equally immeasurable. Uh, you know, it keeps him as present as he can be. Registration for Saturday's Kids Fun Run starts at 8.30 in the morning at Bassett Creek Park in Crystal. Up next, we meet the local team at the USA Cup Soccer Tournament who have an important job on and off the field. Plus, high school football practice is now three weeks away and we'll visit two local teams wrapping up their summer training. But first, Saturday, another chance for storms. Sunday, we get relief from the heat. We'll be right back. Well, this is the final weekend this year for the Schwann's USA Cup Soccer Tournament. Volunteers help facilitate the massive event in Blaine, drawing teams from around the globe. Reporter Shannon Slatton explains how some local students have an important job helping on the fields. Soccer is the common thread that unites hundreds of players and volunteers who give their all on the fields at the National Sports Center. With every game played at Swan's USA Cup, there's a chance of victory, of defeat. This is our dispatch. We have 10 carts that are stacked with backboards and all the other good stuff. Or even injury. This is car three. We checked out that ball to the face. We're clear. If that happens, and here it undoubtedly will, another team will take the field. Bring your toes out for me. Trained medical personnel who volunteer to treat players. We're gonna take you over and get you checked out, okay? Volunteers like Leslie Larson, who is a nurse practitioner. So one of the things that we're concerned about is head injury, concussion. Can you grip both fingers? She's been out here since 1988, when she was a student at Osseo Senior High. It's asking lots of questions. And getting her first taste of medicine. What caused the injury, what he was doing at the time, Okay, and up here it feels normal. So they get to see how it's done. Gary Leafblad, who oversees Osseo's emergency care program, still brings students out to volunteer every summer. Most of our kids are the first response, so they're out on the fields. Uh, someone gets hurt, they called into dispatch. 
The students work with professionals as the first eyes on the field. We sit on the fields, we cover a lot of zones, and we watch for injuries or wait for players to come up to us with an injury that they've received. And be the first one to you know, catch it before they call it in, so they really enjoy that. Did you hear any snap crackles or pops when this happened? Sometimes students have a moment where they get to help. If it's something they can handle, we have them do it and work with the, the patients. So they, they get experience and we let them make the mistakes <laughs> and then we help correct it. Experience that's beneficial sure. enough to come back and help out in games to come. And it's a lot of good experience that you really gain out here. In Blaine, Shannon Slatton, CCX News. Still ahead, a chance to experience theater in the great outdoors. But first, highlights from the American Legion baseball playoffs as local teams battle to stay alive. John Jacobson is in next. I'm John Jacobson with sports. The sub-state and Legion baseball playoffs continue through the weekend across the state. In Osseo, both Maple Grove and Osseo are among the teams fighting for the one spot in the next week's state tournament. Osseo hosting Anoka Friday morning. Bottom of the first inning, Osseo's Jake Contreras chops one that gets past the third baseman into the left field. Adam Lanners comes in to score. And it's the first run of the game. Starting pitcher John Bezdecek was sharp most of the game for Osseo. He strikes out the side here in the top of the second. Still up 1-0 in the third inning. It's Bezdecek coming through at the plate. And he rips a base hit into left field. Lanner scores again, and it's 2-0 Osseo. And it stays that way until the fifth inning when Anoka's Ben Weezer sends one to the gap in left center field. Jackson Haug and Jack Hetrick both score on Weezer's double, and the game is tied. Each team scored a run in the eighth inning, and then in the top of the ninth inning, Dalton Hoffman up, and his grounder gets through into right field for an error, scoring Josh Barker with what turns out to be the game-winning run. Anoka wins 4-3. to three. Osseo is facing Elk River in an elimination game late Friday afternoon. Also Friday in the other winner's bracket semifinal, Maple Grove loses to St. Michael 7-5. to five. That puts Maple Grove into the loser's bracket Friday night. This tournament continues through Sunday at Osseo. In Substate 4, Hopkins faced Excelsior in a second round game. Bases loaded in the early innings for Excelsior, but nice defense here by the Flyers. They turn the third to home to first double play, ending the inning. Tied up at two, Excelsior's Mason Nadalny drives a single end to left field. Jack Sheckman comes in to score, giving Excelsior the lead for good. Hopkins scored five runs late in the eighth inning on a series of walks, but it was not enough. Excelsior wins 9-8, putting Hopkins into the loser's bracket. Wyzetta lost 4-2 to St. Louis Park Friday morning. That pushes Wyzetta on the brink of elimination as well. In Substate 9, Champlin and Armstrong both fell on Thursday, so each of those teams entered play Friday afternoon with one loss in that double elimination tournament. After three days of pool play, the playoffs are underway at the USA Cup Soccer Tournament. It's a bright and early start, game time 7 a.m. in this boys under 17 Silver Division match featuring Maple Grove and St. Anthony. Maple Grove failing to clear the ball here and St. Anthony scores. 1-0 Huskies. Maple Grove strikes though. Osvaldo Rodriguez rolls a shot, deflects off the back of a teammate at in, and levels the score at one. Then Rodriguez Rosa's nets another one. He'll break in and look a quick shot past the keeper to give Maple Brook Atletico a two to one lead. St. Anthony's Mitch Baumgartner bidding for the equalizer. Great save though by Hunter Askland. Second half, Atletico's Ryan Panuski with a nice shot. And it just gets under the crossbar for a 3-1 Maple Grove advantage. They go on to win 3-2, advancing them into Friday afternoon's bracket quarterfinals. Osseo High School football coach Ryan Stockhouse and Wyzetta headman Lambert Brown go back a ways. And earlier this week, their teams came together for joint practice to try to break the monotony of summer workouts. Here's Jason Melilla with more. After practicing against your teammates for a few weeks, it's nice to line up across from a different colored helmet. The Osseo and Wyzetta football teams came together for a joint practice on Wednesday night. It wasn't full contact or full pads, but still the boys were fired up. Especially just because uh, 
a couple years ago we've lost uh, quite a few times to YZ and you know we have a chip on our shoulder to face them so I think we're ready to take it on today. For coaches the joint practice is an opportunity to gauge their team what's working what's not and how to improve going forward. For us as a coach staff I look at it, it's a great chance to learn, learn about our players and learn kind of their personalities and how they respond and then teach how, how to respond and give them the tools so they know how to do that. We figured towards the end of the summer uh, we spent all summer doing X's and O's and drawing stuff up and watching film and, and, and really learning technique. Uh, now it's kind of nice to go compete against somebody else and, and kind of gauge where we're at. We got about four more weeks until the season starts so uh, it, it'll, it'll help us out with depth, it'll help us out with numbers. Facing an opponent can also allow players to get a read on the competitiveness of their teammates, something not always easily deciphered in practice. When you come here, you start to see who really wants to hit someone and who really wants to be out there and play on Friday nights because uh, nothing, nothing you have is given on this team and uh, everything you have is earned and uh, we're earning it out here today. So For July football, this was a pretty intense environment. The Orioles and Trojans will hope to maintain that intensity as the season approaches. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. Wyzetta and Osseo both open the 2017 season on August 31st. That's it for sports. We're back in a moment. Well, finally, an opportunity to experience theater outdoors. Off-Broadway Musical Theater in New Hope is out with a new production. Neil Persley has more in today's weekend showcase. It's a tale as old as time. New Hope's Outdoor Theater is the perfect setting for the Off-Broadway Musical Theater's production of Beauty and the Beast. The artwork and set are excellent, the costumes are top-notch, and the cast is outstanding. The best thing is just being able to play a character that I've always wanted to play, so just an amazing character. Abby Holmstrom is adorable as Belle. I've seen the movie a lot, so that was one thing, just knowing Belle the character and knowing her determination and everything that she stands by and putting that into my character. Bye-bye, Belle. Be careful. Who dared disobey me? Janet Chidozzi plays a ferocious beast, but in real life, he's anything but. I watched Beauty and the Beast a few times, trying to figure out how to be a little more on the angry side, how to be more spoiled almost, um, and trying to figure out how to not be my normal self. <laughs> the singing and choreography are wonderful, and Off-Broadway Musical Theater cordially invites you to come out and relax as... The dining room proudly presents... Like, your dinner. Our guest, be our guest. Put our service to the death. Four weekend showcase from New Hope, Neil Persley, CCX News. The show is on stage Thursday through Saturday for the next three weeks. That does it for us. Have a great weekend, everyone.